All right, everybody, welcome to an exciting battle. This one's actually pretty intense, uh, as it was not as easy to win as some of these other battles have been for me. Uh, but we are coming at you with a battle from the Hungarian invasions of Europe. How badass does that sound? Uh, specifically the Battle of Lakefeld, unfortunately for our uh, Hungarian honeys, they did not win the battle. The battle win goes to the Holy Roman Empire under, uh, I believe, Otto II, if I remember right. Um, so here's the setup for this battle. There's a massive army of Hungarian horse archers that are storming through Central Europe. And they are targeting a small fortified town in modern-day Germany, I believe in Bavaria specifically. So Otto assembles an army of cavalry to counter them, but he knows if he meets these horse archers in the field... His troops are going to get annihilated. So he quickly gets his soldiers into this town of Lakefeld, from which they can force the Hungarians to dismount from their horses and fight predominantly on foot, instead of in the open field where the horse archers would reign supreme. But that doesn't mean that the HRE dropped their horses. While many of the Hungarian horses had trouble finding enough food in Central Europe to sustain themselves, forcing the Hungarians to fight on foot, the followers of our boy Otto, uh, they figure out how to keep their uh, horses nutrient-rich and... Our wolves are captured by the enemy Schwein. All right, calm down, bro. Uh, and they're able to arrive at the battlefield ready to fight. Now, I believe the Battle of Lakefeld would take, uh, I think, three days. I believe it was a three-day-long battle. And what would happen was the horse, uh, the heavy horse of the Holy Roman Empire, were able to maintain their ability to fight from horseback while the horse archers of the uh, Hungarians, while armored, uh, were not as well armored as the Holy Roman Empire's uh, heavy cavalry, and were forced to fight on foot, uh, launching their assault against Lakefeld itself. So what we're doing in this reenactment this is... For the Reich. We need to reverse our fortunes. Okay, bud, chill out. Uh, we've got half of our mounted troops still on their horses. We have half of our mounted troops fighting on foot. So we have 4,000 actual heavy cav, 4,000 uh, melee infantry. I just felt like having 8,000 mounted troops, all heavily armored, all professional for this period, seems... A little bit sketchy to me. So I did half mounted, half dismounted, represented by the sergeant spearman here. And then we have a thousand light infantry uh, to finish off our numbers of 9,000. For the Hungarians, we have 8,000 cavalry that have dismounted. That's represented by the dismounted feudal knights for Hungary. And then they do have a few troops that are still mounted on horses because, uh, according to the accounts, that, you know, a few of the horses, you know, a few of the horses were strong enough to fight, so I'm assuming some of them are actually fighting in the battle. <coughs> so, what I'm doing is I'm drawing most of the Hungarian forces into the main gate, but unfortunately some of them have gone to this back gate as well. And I'm going to split my mounted troops in half, taking 2,000 to assault the back lines of these guys, take the other 2,000 out to the front to help relieve the stress and pressure on my dismounted troops. Whew! I think I'm a little bit too used to these battles only taking three or four minutes. 
speak them real fast. Uh, but it's uh, it's a pressure cooker, and it's on a timed fuse because while my cavalry are doing a good job of getting some early routes on the sort of second half of the Hungarian dismounted cav back here, they are faring pretty well against my cavalry. So I can't just quickly sweep them to eliminate this threat and then bring them around the flank to help out over here. Some Teufel! The enemy are battering down the gates! Dude, chill out! We're doing fine! Uh, and over here, my archers, honestly, I think are the MVPs of this battle right now. The Dude, good job. Right. Chill the we F out, the bro. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> uh, picking a the back lines of uh, the Hungarians back here uh, to buy me the time I need to get this group of my cavalry back here. We are on a scale, obviously. I can't get 20,000 troops um, on uh, a medieval two battlefields, at least not in custom battle. So the scale we are on, I believe, is five to one. So each soldier you see here represents about five that would have been in the historical battle. So you can imagine why I'm a little bit suspicious about uh, the HRE actually having eight to 9,000 uh, mounted troops. It just seems like a massive number. Um, that's just a little bit too, too big for an army of this era to have that much cavalry. And not to say that, that they didn't have that many horses, it's just, um, you know, if, <laughs> I mean, think about it, if, if the Hungarians couldn't feed that many horses uh, and have those horses be strong enough for battle, why would the HRE be any different? So, um, cutting that cavalry number in half, you know, 4,000, 4,000 horses doesn't seem impossible. Uh, and 4,000 horses actually being mounted and, and in combat, uh, strong enough for that, it seems possible. So the other half, or even a larger percentage, could easily have been mounted infantry. Soldiers who came with a donkey or a mule or a horse, um, obviously. But some kind of mount to the battlefield, just to carry their equipment, that also seems pretty feasible. So it looks like my cavalry back here are, I mean, they're taking casualties, but they're not doing bad. And back here, it looks like we're resorting to hit and run tactics to take out the rest of these uh, dismounted Hungarian troops. Now, I believe at the time, oh, nice. I believe at the time, they were not called the Hungarians. Um, one of the big misnomers about Hungary is that they're de the descendants of the Huns. Uh, you know, like Attila the Hun. That's not really accurate. Um, I believe at the time of their entrance into Europe, they were known as the Magyars or the Mayars. So... I don't know how they settled on the name um, Hungary. Maybe it was just, you know, other factions in Europe at the time that stood them as descendants of the Huns. Uh, but imagine, imagine if Hungary today was called Magyar, Magyari instead of, or Mayari instead of Hungary. It would be kind of interesting. But it does look like we've broken the back, uh, or more accurately, I guess the front, of the Maiar or Hungarian assault. And it looks like just in time as we break the back as well. But oh no! I don't go down! We've lost our uh, fearless leader. But perhaps uh, this late in the battle and this close to victory, maybe that will actually uh, entice 
our exhausted troops into fighting even fiercer to get revenge, not just for the loss of their leader, but the loss of their brothers in arms who have died here at Lakefeld. It does look like the Hungarians have one unit still inside the settlement center, but they have just broken, and this may be the end of uh, the Hungarian invasion here. So part of the problem that led to Otto's death here, uh, not necessarily a historical battle, but uh, in our reenactment here, it was there was a group of dismounted Hungarians trying to hold the gate open so some of their companions could get out. And uh, while they, they killed our, our general, they weren't able to secure that escape route for their companions. Still stuck inside, now being taken as prisoner. And it looks like we're just about at the end of the battle here as uh, we just sweep up some of the stragglers. Now for those interested, uh, I've got a link to my website on my YouTube channel. You can actually set up a profile on my website and uh, get to participate in some exclusive forums on several topics of anthropology and history. Um, I'm kind of working on uh, sort of renovating the website a little bit, uh, cleaning it up, making it look a little nicer, trimming, it, trimming the hedges, so to say. But um, it's free to join the websites, and uh, you can get kind of exclusive access to being able to... Uh, Get involved in some cool discussion topics. So it looks like this group of Hungarians is trying to escape as well. They're surrounded by some of the the Holy Roman cavalry, and they are broken in frustration as we just hack them to pieces. But it looks like that's going to be the end of the battle, folks, as we just capture some prisoners and celebrate our win. Yeah, bull. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on a future battlefield.